Hello, hello. Artificial intelligence in the embedded space, in principle, is nothing really new. The Mike's Duino has been on the market for what has been quite a few years. But now something new is here from Dallas Maxim, the Max 78000. Of course, the chip is quite a bit more expensive than the Mike's Duino, but it also has significantly lower power consumption, making it ideally suited for all kinds of edge applications. And in the following few minutes, I want to show you the two different evaluation boards which are available. And finally, I also want to quickly show you the Maxim SDK and just how to use it for the embedded part of the development. I explicitly emphasize the embedded part because the AI work is a different pair of shoes. And yeah, I should switch off the spectral analyzer. Well, when I got in contact with Dallas Maxim, they kindly sent me both of these. So we got here the small feather application platform and here we also got the big evaluation kit. Both of these are commonly available from all kinds of distributors and as you can see here and here they are pretty high margin products so using a price search comparison engine such as OEM Secrets makes sense because you can save a lot of money especially on the large board which is so expensive that it usually ships for free. Either way let's start with the larger of the two boxes. So we look in here, oh we find the usual pink anti-static foam and then we interestingly find a bit of uh, instructions. Here we find the actual board and then we find various support utilities. Let's go over it one by one. Well, you know it, I know it. Like, subscribe. Thank you. First things first, in an epically oversized anti-static bag. We find the evaluation board and one thing which I really like is, you see, they've included these 3D printed like feet so you can sit the board on your desk. Yes, this is the final board. You see large TFT screen, here some small trinket and here we have the actual processor. Next up is our boy Olimex with you see here their USB OCD trinket and here in the little box we get another Olimex adapter. Next we get a few USB cables along with a really really funny message. I wonder why the companies don't simply stop sending stuff to California until they refuse to take these stickers off again but it's a different topic. Then we get this thing, some kind of programming board. Ah, oh, nope. Ah, uh, yes. What is this? This is a little rapid development platform for their smaller ARM microcontroller. And then finally, we get here these all kinds of bits and baubles, as you see here. So this probably is not the normal evaluation kit. I think this is a VIP package. And because we've been talking of bits and baubles, I wanted to show this thing. This is a tiny little plug-in camera and you see here there is a port for it and it says lens faces outward. So we take this port and then we can put the camera in here and now we also have a camera attached to the evaluation board. 
And this incidentally also explains why we get this connector, because it allows us to reposition the camera to look in another direction around the planar. Quite incidentally, we don't get these two debuggers as a free gift from Dallas Maxim to make up for the high price of the large evaluation board. On the small evaluation board, we've got this USB connector, which is directly enabled to load firmware onto the chip. On the large board, we've got these two debugger ports, one SVD, where you connect the little Dallas Maxim board to debug the ARM, and one RISC-V JTAG, which is where you, collect, where you connect the Olimex debugger in order to debug the RISC-V core. Because yes, this thing is a multi-core solution. Incidentally, this here is the non-socketed version. There also is a version of this board where the chip is in a socket so you can take it out. But the really cool aspect is this. You see, the little display actually provides you permanent information about the power consumption. So you see here in milliwatt, you see here the voltage levels and even the current being consumed. And yes, of course, we can try to talk with the thing. If we push the right button, it says PB1. And now it's listening. And now we can say one, two. You see, it doesn't like it so much. But well, my English is accent loaded. Incidentally, you also get the same demo on the little unit. But on the little unit, it just blinks an LED and gives you status information to the serial terminal on the PC. Be that as it may, now it's time to look at the smaller guy, the feather. It's a bit difficult to open. Damn it. Oh shit. And you see here, what do we get here? We get one USB cable, two headers, a very nice pinout card, and finally the actual teeny tiny evaluation board. And one thing is very interesting here. You see, this is the evaluation board and the display for it is not included. So the display for this one, it's a separate product and you also need to buy it separately. Before we talk about how to do actual embedded development with the thing, I wanted to show you this little diagram of the ecosystem. You see, we've got two bubbles. First, we've got the AI guy, the data scientist over there. He works with Python and the various machine learning frameworks. And this guy usually sits under Linux and usually he should be sitting on a workstation with an NVIDIA graphics card because of the hardware acceleration. And then this guy will pass you a set of model files which you essentially integrate into your embedded solution. So you usually are sitting over there, you are the MCU guy, you code in C in an Eclipse derivative called Maxim SDK, which is available under Windows 10. And now that we've got this sorted, we have to look first of all here. The Maxim Micros SDK. This contains the actual development kit for the thing if you want to create embedded software for it. The AI toolchain runs under Linux, it is a completely different animal, but here I only want to look at the actual embedded kit. And when you download and install it, you see here you get Maxim SDK and what's very important here, examples, and here we've got all the actual program examples. And what is especially interesting is here you see a folder CNN and this is where you have the actual AI examples inside. So, you see we can start it here from the Eclipse Maxim SDK prompt. It always does this mandatory little check for updates. 
And yes, sometimes it actually finds an update, in which case you see here, continue, and it just does the normal update, like you would know it from Qt. You see, just you continue, click through it, and then you have to wait for it to complete. Well, and when you are done, you find yourself in this more or less stock Eclipse environment. One thing is interesting, you see here, we can create a new product for Maxim microcontrollers. And then you see here, you have to select the chip type first. And here you've got some of the example projects. You see that now they also offer the sub projects in CNN, which they didn't offer before. And either way, you can then select one of them and you just continue the steps to get the actual project. And one thing is interesting. You see here, for example, with cat's dogs and cat's dogs demo, you often get two different examples. And one of the examples works on static data, whereas the other one works with dynamic information. And the really nice one here is the KVS20 demo, because that creates the little voice recognition demo, which you get on the board immediately after you unpack it for the first time. And yeah, in principle, yes, the IDE always throws a lot of these linter errors, but you can do nothing about them. But in principle, this is very much a stock development IDE. You see here, you've got your entry point, void main, blah, blah, blah. You configure the clock and all the stuff. And then the interesting aspect mainly is here. You see, this is the work loop. In the first step, you need to load some data into the CNN engine. And then basically you just keep feeding it with information in the loop. And one thing is interesting, because you see here the actual neuro neurological network information. Most of it is in these files. And you see it says here you should not edit them because these are created by your data scientist or your AI guy. And he uses the Ubuntu Python SDK to provide you with these files. And as I said, it looks a bit weird at first, but in principle, it's just normal embedded C. And if you've worked on SGS Thompson or on Giga device before, there really is nothing to get excited about here. So, to cut a long story short, the Maxim Max 78000 definitely is not the cheapest microcontroller solution on the market. But it doesn't have to be. If you need a system to run neural networks and this kind of stuff, on an embedded edge device with minimal power consumption, this definitely is a chip which you might be interested in using. And yes, this small guy for a small series, maybe it is cheaper to just use him as a plugin of sorts.